Hello, my name is Thiago Davi Cudi Buzarello. I will present my research, which has titled Designing a Second Order Generalized Integrator Digital Phase Lock Loop Based on a Frequency Response Approach. This presentation is for the Innovative Smart Grid Technologies 2019. This is the list of authors. I am the main author of this research. This research is part of my joint research, which I have with some colleagues. The objectives of this research is to present a digital phase lock loop based on the second order generalized integrator. The PLL is a very well and mature technology and the literature has a lot of PLL descriptions, design and we can find in the literature hundreds of PLL and the main focus of this paper is to present a PLL using directly the Z domain. I mean the design of the PLL is entirely in a digital domain and then we can present here an easy, fast and accurate way to implement a digital PLL based on the second order generalized integrator. And in this paper I also explain the reasons to use different integrators which is to avoid algebraic loop which is commonly found in continuous time PLL and in order to verify the efficacy of the design presented in this paper I implemented the, the PLL in a digital signal processor the 28335 from Texas Instruments and experimental and simulation results show the efficacy of this PLL to keep synchronized with grid voltage at different frequencies like 50 and 60 Hz. And this is the simplified diagram of the digital PLL. So you have here the input voltage and this passes through the analog to digital converter plus zero order holder. And right after that we have here a gain just to compensate the sensor gain. Since you, we are measuring a grid voltage which has 108 volts peak, we need to reduce it through a sensor before taking to this, this signal into the DSP. And right after this conversion, I made here a gain compensation, the sensor gate compensation. So at this point, I have the, exactly the same information from the grid voltage in a digital domain. Right after, the signal passes through the second order generalized integrator which follows the main contribution of this paper. I will present the blocks within this diagram in the next slide. So we have here the input voltage and the output is two voltage which are orthogonal each other. And then after they are created the V alpha and V beta, these signals are transferred to the DQ axis. So we have here the D which is synchronized with the theta and the VD here is also a rotating reference frame. So since we are feedbacking here the theta and making this conversion and then later comparing to zero, since this is achieved, since the error is null, we have here a synchronization with VD with the input voltage, which means that this signal here is correctly synchronized with the input voltage, which is the, the goal of this PLL. Right after the error is computed, the signal passes through the PI controller. Then we have here a unit delay, and this is necessary in order to avoid the algebraic loop, because we are using a, such a variable within this block, and then we need to make a unit delay in the digital domain. In the S domain, in the, I mean the continuous time domain, this is not necessary and this is what we see in a lot of books. Later, the frequency is established here, which is 50 amp, 50 hertz, and then we have here a reset well, integrator, because this signal here is a ramp, so we need to reset all the time in order to make this theta signal varying from 0 to 2pi, 2p. 
so we have here also the frequency of the input signal this may be used as a variable in a next algorithm and now we have here also the angular frequency which is used in the within the second order generalized integration this is the reason why this is written here as a tag taking a care about taking a special care about with this block this is the simplified diagram of the second order generalized integrator and this is our main contribution of this paper designing this block here entirely in z domain what you have here as a one of the main contributions that we cannot find in a lot of PLL is the low pass filter located right here since we have also this feedback we can eliminate the low frequency components that the second order usually supplies which you usually find on the most common PLL so this, this second order generalized integrator is able to eliminate the low frequency at the output signal and this is the main concept of these figures we have here two integrators and now but we are in a z domain they need to be different I mean it's discretization must be different this is based on a forward integrator and this is based on the backward integrator again this is also necessary in order to avoid algebraic loops you can find a line a lot of papers that they just say that this is an integrator but actually need to take special care about these integrators so we have here input signal and two output signals which is later transformed into dq axis and this low pass filter here is also one of the contribution of this paper with this we can make the PLL to be to have better performance in. these are the integrators we have here the forward integrators and the backward integrator and then this is also a contribution of this paper in order to show you the values of these coefficients in order to make these integrators to be as expected we need to be careful here because in the four integrator here is the feedback of the output and this is the backward the unit delay for responsible to feedback the output is located right here the design of this PLL is based on these equations in the paper they are better described this is just to show that using these equations you can really achieve here what it is expected to the second order generalized integrator it means that if this is the transfer function the closed loop transfer functions for V alpha and beta we have see here that they are computing only the 60 Hz which is expected so if the input voltage has distortion noise this shows that the second order generalized integrator proposed in this paper is able to take only the component at 60 Hz and here you have the phase for this closed loop transfer function then after designing the PLL entirely in Z domain in digital domain now we verified our proposal through experimental verification and we run in the processor 28335 from Texas Instruments a signal generator was used to generate the input signal of the PLL and in order to visualize the internal variables of the DSP we are using a SPI interface plus an external digital to analog converter which is the IC MCP 4922 in this case I can you I can see in the scope any variable I have within the DSP like the error the output signal of the controller this is very useful in verification of prototypes because you can debug your prototype in case you have a trouble and in my case here I'm, I'm reading a lot of variables external to the DSP and using a scope here we have some figures and this one is the input signal and the theta signal for 60 Hz for 50 Hz then we can see here that this signal is correctly synchronized with the input voltage here is the same result but the input 
signal has 60 hertz and we can clearly see here that the the digital PLL is working good so notice that this PLL is designed these results are designed are results for the PLL designed at 60 hertz and even though this is working at 50 and this shows a capability of the PLL to operate at different frequencies here we have here a step on the frequency in the input signal varying from 50 to 60 so we can clearly see here that the PLL goes to the state state condition after some cycles and you can clearly here see that the theta is also with the same frequency here is the same result but now changing from 60 to 50 you have here the theta signal also changing the frequency now it's important to highlight that the this variable this step in the frequency is not usual usually find in grids because they are too large so supposing a grid frequency with 60 hertz the most variable variation in the frequency is around 1 hertz it means that from 59.5 up to 60.5 but this result shows that the display is able to operate in a variety in a range of frequency which means that it would be sufficient to operate in frequencies around 60 hertz even though these steps here is not common in grid voltages and even not allowed here you have the input and output signals of a PLL initially they are synchronized and right here they suffer a change in the frequency it was 60 hertz and then becomes 50 hertz and after some cycles we can clearly see here that they are synchronized again in this result here this is a phase jump so the input signal is 50 hertz and suddenly the input signal suffers a phase jump equals to 90 degree and you can clearly see here that the theta signal goes synchronized right after the phase jump showing the efficacy of this PLL so some conclusions this paper presented a digital PLL based on a second order generalized integrator the main contribution here was to present the design and implementation directly in Z domain instead of using times in continuous time domain and later make a lot of modifications now we have here just the implementation directly in Z domain and also based on a frequency response method. So we show that the experimental results show the efficacy of the PLL to be synchronized with grid voltage at 50 and 60. During transient verification the PLL did not show unpredictable behavior and therefore the digital PLL presented in this paper is an attractive tool which ensures an easy, fast and accurate way to use digital PLL in electrical power application. This is our main goal, to present an easy, a fast and accurate way to design and implement a digital PLL. Even though PLL is a major technology, so we have here a fast and accurate and easy way to do that. And before ending this simulation, I'd like to thank you to the CNP key, which supports this research. I forgot to include here a slide with acknowledgments, but I'd like here to per in person to thank to CNP key and the Federal University of Santa Catarina. And the simulation files used in this research is freely available on my webpage. You can just go there and download the files I used in this research. We have, a lot, we have there both two files, one for simulation and one for code generation for the DSP I said we used here. This is my email. If you have some questions, you can contact me through emails. So now I can answer some questions. I'll be so glad to answer some questions. Thank you.